its deadlines. The world present. And a selfish, greedy place it is, too. Feeling burnt out. Need to get away from the office for a while. Such a holiday can be arranged. But think it over. You'll have to give up a lot at the vanishing point. <coughs> When you're the best in your field, everybody wants you. But sometimes they want you for a reason you wouldn't believe. Lingotech Services. Where the hell is Honest Chuck? General McCord, please don't talk to me like that. Tell him to get back to me. I'll do that. Okay. Yes? Would you like some more orange juice or, or, or another muffin? No, but I could use some more aspirin. You've already had six. Really? General McCord called. He said they're all waiting for you. Just keep him away from me. 24 hours is all I need. He's been calling for days. He says the U.N. ambassador is tearing his hair out. They've got to know what the Koreans said to the Russians. Marlene, whose side are you on? I'm trying to help you, Mr. Honest Chuck. But General McCord says they're going to ask for an adjournment of the U.N. meeting if you can't crack that code today. I've got everything in the computer right now, Malene. Just keep things peaceful for me, okay? I'll do my best, Mr. Honest Chuck. Mr. Honest Chuck, they're here again. You know... Huh? Who's here? The creeps in the orange pajamas. Did you tell them what I told you to tell them? Yeah. Well, what did they say? They said they already are in hell. That's why they need you. Well, it's nice to feel needed. Do you need me, Molly? I... I like to work here, Mr. Honest Jack. Really? <laughs> I'm surprised to hear that. <laughs> I don't like to work here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll tell you what, Marlene. Tell the creeps that if they stay out there any longer, we're going to start charging them $500 a day. Yes, Mr. Honest Chuck. Oh, Mr. Sanderson calls. He can call me from now till doomsday. I'm not here for Sanderson. I'm never here. I told you that. Never, ever. Uh, would you like a Valium? No. I just don't want to talk to Sanderson. He's got a writ of possession for your house and your car. <laughs> There's a guy out there with a black suit and a violin case, right? <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Honest Chuck. Send that guy in, the hitman. I'll see him. Get it over with. You've got to talk to Sanderson. You're just the secretary, Marlene. Don't play Florence Nightingale. Sanderson's a nice man. He wants to talk to you before he does anything. He's already doing it. Kotla Feldman, Hurstenhorn, Sanderson, and Campanelli. Do you have chocolate ripple? Whom do you wish to speak to, sir? Sanderson. Who shall I say is calling? Mother. Hello, Mr. Honestchuk. Hello, Mr. Sanderson. Your wife, Mr. Honestchuk, is a very distraught woman. Poor thing. I'll bet she's down to her last 300 pairs of shoes. Your children, Mr. Honestchuk. My children are none of your goddamn business. If you'd only make the payments, it would make... I haven't money. got the money, Mr. Sanderson. But I tell you, I got a very big program due this week. I'll be finished in a couple of days. I'm half finished now, and when I get paid, I can pay my wife. We've been through a lot together, haven't we, Mr. Honestchuk? Yes, we have, indeed. Mr. Honestchuk, I don't like seizing people's property. It's messy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if I have to do it, I will. So I'm going to advise my client to give you on 5 p.m. Thursday. Mm -hmm. If we don't have your money in our hands by then, I'm going to send in the sheriff first thing Friday morning. <laughs> oh, goodbye, Mr. Sanderson. <sighs> goodbye, Mr. Honestchuk. Marlene? Get me General McCord, please. Mr. Honestchuk, you're not going to believe this. Yes, I am. The creeps in the orange pajamas, they just gave me the first day's rent. $500 in gold coins. I could understand why they wanted me. I'm a linguist, a cryptographer. I'm an expert at generating codes and uh, breaking them, too, when that's what the client wants. 
And I'm also an expert with computers. So I can build them and program them to do anything with language that you want done. We have been to see many people, Mr. Onischuk. They all told us we must come to you. I could just hear the other guys in the business. Oh, go see Ted Onischuk. He's your man. With friends like that, who needs enemies? Mr. Onischuk, we live in Nepal. We want you to come to our home and build us a machine that will take all the letters of all the languages in the world and print out the nine billion names of God. The idea was absurd, of course. But even if I wanted to take that, just to prove to myself I could do it, they would have needed a whole room full of interface computers and a whole army of printers. Our great guru taught us that when we have written out the nine billion names of God, God will bring this universe of illusion to an end. Then a new and better age can begin. <laughs> so what's your big hurry? I mean, do you guys really want the world to end? Take your time, pal. Write slow. Nobody's rushing you. Mr. Onischuk, for 300 years we have been studying the languages of the world and writing out the names of God according to the instructions our great teacher left to us. But now it is hard to find young men to join us. They do not have reverence for the way. We are afraid. We have only one child in our ranks. He is a good boy, but when we are gone, he will not be able to carry on alone. Our holy task will not be completed. Well, uh, I can understand your problem now, my friend, but... Uh, uh, no, I'm not the solution you're looking for. Our astrologers have told us we must seek a man of your talents. I'm busy, I told you. You must help us, Mr. Honest Chuck. You are our last hope. Tough nuggies, friend. I figured they'd just get tired and go away. But instead, they just set up camp in my outer office. In God's divine plan, there is a purpose to everything, Mr. Honest Chuck. It became a contest of wills. Which of us would crack first? Me or the chief lama? Ted, we could be bigger than Zenith. We could be bigger than Apple. We could even take on IBM. I'll put up the money. I like the independence. You have to grow, Ted, or the big guys will gobble you up. Jill, a diamond bracelet? Where did you get it? In bed. <laughs> Screwing. Oh. <laughs> Jill's growing up. I know. It's nothing personal, honest Chuck. Just between us, I think your wife's a greedy bitch. But she does have her legal rights. Do you have a wife, Mr. Sanderson? <laughs> Not anymore. You don't need any more parties, Mr. Honest Chuck. You need some sleep. What's the use of working so hard if I don't get any fun out of life, Marlene? I hate to see you look so thin. Oh, Come on, Teddy. No, I, I can't do those steps. Yes, you can. Oh, Come on. No, I can. I can. All right, I'll try. <laughs> Look at that, Dad. Oh, if you had his brain, you'd be dancing too. Oh yes, Teddy, you're wonderful. Oh yes, yes, yes. Wake up, Teddy. Huh? Wake up. No. Oh. Oh. What? What time? I don't know, but the sun's coming up. I can see it. <gasps> oh. No. Oh, yeah. You have to go home. Get up, Teddy. Joe, look, we've been going together for around two years. Do you think maybe just this once? No, you can't stay here overnight. We are not living together. Oh, Joe, I am so tired. You can't imagine how tired I am. So am I. And I have to look beautiful at 7 o'clock in the morning. Please go, Teddy. Don't do this to me. I'm tired. I have a catalog job today. Underwear. Don't look at me like that, Ted. Like what? You look like you're going to cry. You are crying. Damn you. I can't help it. Well, you bastard. You're doing this deliberately. You're so self... Damn you. Damn you. Sure She's 
got to be kidding. I never took mine off. I wish I brought my parachute. Our friends are waiting at the field. They have hired porters to carry you to the ashram. Carry me? You'll be quite comfortable. How far do we have to go? Oh, as you measure distance, about um, two miles, I think. I'll walk, thanks. As you wish. Our home is on top of a mountain. Terrific. chant like that all the time? Four times a day. We sing names of God. It pulls us to our duty. How many have you got, sir? Our scribes have set down 912,632 names of God. Terrific. So all you need now is 8,999,000,000 more. You begin to understand why we have brought you here. <laughs> it's, uh... Pretty around this place. Can I go for a walk? As you wish. Oh, if you follow that path going up behind the monastery, mm -hmm. you will find a mountain pool. Mm -hmm. I think you will find it most comforting. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I'll take a look. Do anything for you anyway until my stuff gets here. We know that. We have a monk waiting at the airport. You know something? You're starting to remind me of my other clients. Were they also in the service of God, Mr. Onischuk? No, I wouldn't say that about them. <laughs> Enjoy your walk, Mr. Onis Jack. Rada, Jehovah, Quesukaru, Hera, I just wanted to get away from the office. I didn't realize how burned out I really was. For days, maybe weeks, all I did was sleep and go for walks. We were close to the tree line. I could see the tops of the mountains pushing like fists into the clouds. The monks told me that one of those fists was Annapurna. There was something very special about that place. I'm, I'm not a believer in anything, but it was peaceful there. Inner peace, Mr. Onischuk, comes from having a purpose in life. I saw people in your world frantically trying to gratify their senses and their appetites. I was overcome with pity for them. They will never know true inner satisfaction. They will always be tormented by their cravings. Peace can only come from submitting your will to the will of God. Breakfast was a bowl of porridge and a mug of tea with a glob of yak butter floating in it. The stuff was strong enough to take the enamel off your teeth. But I grew to like it after a while. I thought of the tea as my early morning blast. I used to get up with the monks and sometimes even chant with them, just to be sociable. But then, after breakfast, they'd go to work writing and... I'd take off into the hills with a loaf of bread and a bit of cheese. Our great leader wandered alone these mountains for 25 years, Mr. Onischuk, before he understood that this was the place God had chosen for our holy task. In the evenings, there was absolutely nothing to do. There weren't even any books. At least not in any language I could read. Sometimes, I used to just sit and watch the night come, which happens quite quickly in the mountains, like somebody dropping a black curtain. I don't think you ever realize how fast you're running and suddenly there isn't anywhere to go. At first, I would carry on imaginary conversations with all the people I'd left behind saying all the things I could never bring myself to say to them in real life. But that ran down. Then 
had stopped altogether. My mind was empty. I could sit for hours without moving. I probably looked just like another monk. Must not go in here. Now, tell me quietly who has come. The boxes for the new master. I met the porters on the road. God's will be done. Why does he need so many? You go to the scribes. Bring them fresh ink and pens. Mr. Honest Chuck. Mr. Honest Chuck. We are ready. Yes. I guess you are. Oh. Allow me to, to sit here with you a moment. This used to be one of my holy places. When I first came to the monastery, the older monks were very hard on us. Much harder than we are on our young one. So when I thought I could no longer stand the discipline and I would have to go back to my father's farm, I would come up and throw stones into the pool, just as you are doing. I think this is one of those places on earth that God has breathed upon. Then why don't you enjoy it? When you've got a place as beautiful as this... Why aren't you up here all the time? But we do love these mountains. That's what you say. But you have rooms full of monks down there writing down the names. Not. They never even see the mountains. Oh, they feel the peace of this place. That is why we are here. If I had something as beautiful as all this, I don't think I'd waste my time trying to figure out nine billion names for God. I think I'd just relax and enjoy it. But the world changes. This little stream here is changing even as we look at it. The sensual world, what you call the physical world, is mere appearances. Only God is unchanging. Only the will of God is permanent. And it is our duty to serve God. I just see trees here. Oh, what do you call those birds? They are doves. You know what's so incredible up here? The absolute silence. It's like... like medicine. You are becoming one of us. <laughs> Not a chance, chum. We have our sacred mission, Mr. Honest Chuck. Yeah. So does everyone who hires me. You're... He's just like my old pal, General McCord. He's got a mission, too. Everybody's so busy saving the world, they don't have time to enjoy it. We have started the generator, Mr. Honest Chuck. Is there anything else we can do to help you begin? Okay. Yen. Oh, the scribes will be very pleased to see you begin. I just ordered my thumb to the motherboard. That's all. Teacher, oh. uh, uh, what are those little... Those little things, my friend, are the heart of the computer. They're called silicone chips. <laughs> they are so small. <laughs> can these little chips really think? <laughs> no. Only people can think. Those little chips do exactly what I tell them to do. You know what I think, Master? Hmm? 
I think that when your little tiny chips have written out the nine billion names of God, he will reach down and take me by the hand because I have helped you build your machine. And he will say, Come to me, Narayan. And he will lift me up to sit in heaven beside him. Narayan, none of that is going to happen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, you'll see. Have you ever thought of leaving this place? Where would I go? I... To school in the south. Yes, I, I would like to go to school. But I have no money. My father brought me here because there is no food in our house. I have money. And I would like to help you. Uh, I must be here for the end of the world. It's... Look at these chips, kid. Do you think there's any power in them to make the world end? Oh, they are small, aren't they? They're just little bits of silicone, Marion. If what you say is true, if the monks are wrong, I would like to go to school. I'll take you then, Marion. Give it a run. They're so quiet. I expected them to be noisy. Those are laser printers, my friend. State of the art. And I've programmed your great teacher's formulas into the computers. They are miracles. Oh, so many generations of monks have worked and died in this place. I wonder what they would say if they could see your machine. I'm wondering what the monks who are here right now are going to say. They will be very happy. They've spent their whole lives writing and chanting. Now these machines are going to put them right out of business. If I was one of those monks, I think I'd get pretty angry. That cannot be. Our religion teaches the way of peace. What if your religion falls apart? When the Latin name comes off those printers and nothing happens, those monks are going to go crazy. Ah, <sighs> I... I have thought of that possibility. It's not a possibility. It's what's going to happen. Come with me, my friend. There are mountains in my country, too. You can open an ashram there. I must stay here to the end. I'm trying to save your life. I understand you, Mr. Onischuk, and I am grateful. But every person has his own special destiny. And this is mine. You helped me get myself to let me help you now, please. I am beyond your help, Mr. Onischuk. But the boy... Narian? If something happens to the monastery, he will have nowhere to go. I'll come back for him, Sadiji. I'll see that he gets an education. You are a good man, Mr. Onischuk. Goodbye, Sadiji. Take care of yourself. Goodbye, Mr. Onischuk. And thank you everything. Goodbye, Mr. Honest Chuck. And all my blessings go with me. Watch how you pass it, I'll tell you. Not easy, friend. I'm not in that big a hurry. You got all the time in the world, eh? No, that's not true, but I'm not in a hurry. A few minutes, more or less. Are they really important? This is buddy. Time is money. No, it's not. <laughs> who told you that? A friend who lives on a mountain. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, tell him to try driving a cab. Then he'll learn the real truth. <laughs> time is money. Time is money. <laughs> Chuck, these are so beautiful. Marlene, 
Do you think maybe you could start calling me Ted? <laughs> real diamonds? As real as you get them, Marlene. I'm a wealthy man now. Uh, the monks paid me very well. Oh, a diamond necklace. My mother always wanted a diamond necklace. And now I have one. Marlene, do you trust me? I'm not sure, Mr. Ron. Uh, uh, Ted. I, I, I guess that's one of the things we're going to find out if we can trust each other. <laughs> but I, I know I love you. I, I always loved you. But you were so frantic. Well, uh, <coughs> I uh, had a lot of growing up to do. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should go to bed now, Mr. Honest Chuck. I would like that very much. And it's getting windy. There must be a storm coming. I'll just close the window. Oh, my God. I don't believe it. But it was happening. There's a first time for everything. The stars. I put my arm around Marlene. We both looked up at the sky. I had time to think of Sadiji and little Marion. To wonder what they were feeling. Because... One by one, the stars are going out. Hello? Still there? Good. Are you feeling any more rest? Some find the silence a little trying at first. But it grows on you. Soon, you find yourself listening for it. Listening to nothing but the silence. Listening to the world fading away, vanishing.